Ah, happy sunshine, family. We're here for part five of the Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe detention hearing transcript. This hearing took place on August 29th, 2017 in Knoxville, Tennessee. We left off in the last episode on page 54. We had gotten through the end of that. So Heather is talking about uh, the data processing work that she is able to do with her new startup and that she'll be able to do all of that from the address that Ms. Wasilik, her temporary landlord, for the duration of this case. So the judge responds. So the tougher issue is that Ms. Davidson says that she doesn't. You wouldn't believe that I have any authority over you. So you wouldn't submit to the orders of this court because you don't believe I have any jurisdiction. So that if you don't believe I have any jurisdiction, then you do what you want because I have no say so. Heather says, may I respond? Judge Shirley says, please. So Heather starts, as I had said before, when there is a matter of jurisdiction or a matter where we don't agree on what law is applicable, I still have a long performance history of 17 years. Obviously, when we do the jurisdiction issue, there will be the matter of the fact that the United States, which is a federal corporation, was foreclosed, but yet I still travel with a passport because that's what re- that's what's required by customs agents, etc. I have followed all of the laws and regulations until such time as there is a disposition in that matter. And again, I have requested the hearing so we could do a disposition on or excuse me, a decision, determination on jurisdiction. If I just believe there's no jurisdiction, I would have just taken off without any regard, but that's not the case. I have the highest regard for the law, and this is a matter of just a conflict of law that we need to determine in a very peaceful and in a procedural way, which is what we are doing. Judge says, right, and I'm going to give you a full hearing on that issue on a separate day and time, but if I release you, I need to know that until I make a ruling on that issue, that you understand that your release is conditional based on my order. That I absolutely understand, replies Heather. Judge, excuse me, the judge continues, you have to understand that you have to submit to this release order. Heather says, I, I'm aware that I understand that. And I agree to that until we are able to determine that judge says, and you have to understand that if you don't, then I will issue a warrant for your arrest and have you brought in here and we'll go over the violation, which would probably result in you being locked up. Heather says, I'm very aware of that. And after the 30-day tour that the U.S. Marshals just gave me, I'm not looking to repeat that at all. Judge says, okay, if you abide by the rules and follow my conditions, you won't have a single problem with that. Heather says, I do accept your, your rules at this time to go, to go forward with the determination. Even then, I still will accept the determination as you make it on that day. Judge says, all right, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stop. This is an interesting sentence here. Even then I still will accept the determination as you make it on that day. So Heather's saying when we do the jurisdiction hearing, uh, I'm going to accept your determination that you, whatever it is that you make on that day. Judge says, all right. So I think what I'm hearing, Miss Davidson, 
is she at least accepts my authority for purposes of her release, although she still retains and reserves the right to argue about the court's overall jurisdiction, either over her or over the case or both. Is that a fair statement, Miss Tucci Giraffe? That is true and accurate and complete statement. Thank you. Judge says, okay, all right. Let me just take a couple minutes. I want to talk to probation about some specifics, and then I will come right back and give you my decision. If Ms. Tucci Giraffe needs to use the facilities or needs a break or anything like that, you can do that. Otherwise, I don't anticipate my recess to be very long, so everybody can stay seated. If anybody else needs to go outside, do it now because I'll be resuming probably in about the next five to seven minutes. Okay, all right. The court stands in recess at this time. The courtroom deputy chimes up. All rise. This honorable court stands in recess. <clears throat> the judge says, when we come back, I'm going to go over scheduling, so be ready for that irrespective, okay? And then there's a recess from 12.01 p.m. to 12.09 p.m. Courtroom deputy starts it up again. All rise. This court is again in session with the Honorable C. Clifford Shirley Jr., United States Magistrate Judge presiding. Please come to order and be seated. Judge Shirley says, all right, <clears throat> Miss Tucci Giraffe, I have decided that I believe you would be a candidate for release, provided you agree to all these conditions and that you agree to sign the same. Okay, so I want to go over real quickly with you just so you understand them. You're not to violate federal, state, or local law while you're out on release. Whatever you do, you're not to break the law in any way, shape, form, or fashion, any law. Do you understand that? I do. Do you agree to that? I do. Okay. Can you pull that down for her, Mr. Lloyd, just so she doesn't have to be so uncomfortable trying to speak into it? Yes, ma'am. Miss Davidson speaks up. Your Honor, just to be clear, Miss Tucci Giraffe is not a licensed attorney and should not be practicing law except with regard to herself. And if the United States learns of any practice of law, we will bring it to the court's attention. Wow, Miss Davidson is really, she's got her sights set on, on Heather for sure. Amazing that there's somebody's job, somebody's whole livelihood is just to go and attack people in court at every facet that they're aware of. Wow. Wow. Judge says, all right, practicing law without a license is a violation of the law, so you're not to do that. Mr. Lloyd? Mr. Lloyd says, I just couldn't resist the urge to respond, but I would like to. Ms. Davidson says, you're not the attorney. Mr. Lloyd says, every unauthorized practice of law is a crime. Judge says, whatever, Will, and Lloyd cuts him off. I hear the bell, Your Honor, and I start to run out. Judge says, I understand, and just stay calm and carry on. Bottom line is, you're not to break the law, okay? If there's a dispute over whether what you're doing violates the law, I may be the arbiter of that. I would stay away from that because you don't know what I would decide. If I decide that it's a violation of the law, then you get locked up. If it's not a violation of the law, you stay out. That's a pretty bad risk to run, so just stay away from anything that might be close. Okay, you're to be living at the address you told me and nowhere else. <clears throat> and if you were to change that address or that phone, which you're not going to be allowed to do unless you get permission in advance. Heather says, okay. Judge continues. Will you have... Is there a landline there at that residence? Do we know? Ms. Wasilik, is there a landline phone? Ms. Wasilik says, yes, sir, there's a landline. I can't hear on a cell phone. Judge says, that's okay. What's the phone number there? Ms. Wasilik replies, area code 
and then the rest of her phone number is redacted. Probably by Terran Cognito. Judd says, all right. And does it have any extra features on that phone, like call waiting, any of that? Ms. Wasilic says, it's got call waiting. No, I don't know. Yeah, it's got caller ID, and I'm not sure if it's got call waiting. Judge says, all right, the reason I ask, one of the conditions <clears throat> is going to be electronic monitoring for Ms. Tucci Giraffe, and that requires a landline without any of those features. Now, you can have one put in in the residence, part of the residence that you're in. Ms. Wasilic says, uh-huh. Judge continues, Miss Tucci Giraffe, where she's going to be in, like the mother-in-law quarters. Ms. Wasilic says, right. Judge Shirley says, if she can get a separate phone line put in there, that's fine. Okay, says Ms. Wasilic. If not, we're going to have to use yours. Ms. Wasilic says, okay. And that will just mean that the phone company will have to take those features off of it. Oh, I see, says Ms. Wasilic. Judge says, so that could be an inconvenience for you. So Ms. Tucci Giraffe, it may require you to get a separate phone line. Do you understand that? I do. The electronic monitoring works off a landline. Heather butts in, may I? Ms. Wasilic says, can you have call waiting? I mean, caller ID? The judge says, yep, I think so. What do you, is caller ID okay? Probation officer says, it just needs to be a basic phone line with no features. The judge says, yeah, that's what I've understood. It has to be a clean line. Marie Wasilic says, okay. <clears throat> Heather says, may I just confer with Ms. Wasilic to make sure it's okay to put an extra phone line in at my cost? The judge asks, would it be okay if she put another phone line in at her cost? <clears throat> Marie says, with Airbnb, of course, most everybody uses their cell phone if there's a place to put one. Judge says, okay, yeah. So that will be something you'll want to do, okay? Heather says, okay. Do you agree to that, asks the judge? Heather says, I do. Judge says, all right. You're also obviously to report to court as required. I'm going to give you a motion day for hearing your motions, and then we'll have a trial day for you to also appear for your trial if it gets that far, okay? Heather says, okay. Judge continues, all right. You're also to be supervised by a probation officer. <clears throat> I'm not sure who it will be, but it doesn't matter. That person will contact you from time to time and ask you to do certain things. It's incumbent upon you to do them, whether it's a peer at probation here or if it's to meet them at your residence or anything, you must do whatever they say. It's just like me telling you to do it, okay? Heather says, I'm familiar with that. <clears throat> All right, if they, they're under instructions that if you don't, or if you're not there, they're to pick up the phone and call me. And usually I just issue a warrant for your arrest, okay? Heather says, got it. Judge says, good. Heather says, thank you. Judge Shirley continues, you're to continue or actively seek employment. So I would like you to work. Be careful what you're working at. I wouldn't work at anything that might be the least bit questionable to the U.S. Attorney's Office as far as employment. And, but just, or excuse me, but I was just, but I just think working would be a good thing for you. So this is really interesting. You know, Heather's got a lot of work to do on this case. Uh, I'm sure that a team of lawyers working full-time around the clock could be kept busy on preparing her case. And so I just want to point out that the judge is saying, so I would like you to work. Basically, he is taking up 
or telling Heather that he would like her to devote a chunk of her time, which is her most valuable resource right now, to chasing the dollar, chasing money. <clears throat> and I wonder about the legality of this, really. I don't... I'm under the perception that if Heather wanted to not work at all and just work on her case, that that should be (laughs) constitutionally protected somehow. I mean, to, to throw a whole bunch of charges at Heather and then uh, release her on this ankle monitoring program and then have the judge pile on, Hey, I would like you to work. And by the way, We're going to be making sure that you're doing something that's not against the law. You can't do anything that's going to be a lawyer. So he's basically forcing her to work at a minimum wage job. Well, this isn't an order yet. He just says, I would like you to work. But uh, I don't... uh, This may not be in Heather's best interests to have to earmark a chunk of her time on a recurring basis to a minimum wage job. That that doesn't feel right to me, guys. But I just think working would be a good thing for you. And I tell everybody that will listen that almost everybody that I have out on release that works never violates. And almost everybody I let out that doesn't work violates. So you're to surrender your passport. You've already done that. The other part of that coin is you're not to obtain a new passport. Your travel is currently restricted to the Eastern District of Tennessee, okay? So Mr. Lloyd can advise you of the parameters. It's basically East Tennessee, but if you needed to go somewhere, if you had a family emergency or something like that, the bottom line is you have to seek permission before you go. Heather says, and just to be clear, yes, says the judge. As far as seeking permission, yes. Do I contact the probation officer? Yes, you will have a specific probation supervising officer. You contact them. Okay, replies Heather. Generally, we grant permission without a problem, provided we know a few things. Where you're going, when you're coming back, who you're going to be with, and why you're going. Okay, replies Heather. Okay, if you don't get permission, here's the problem. If you don't get permission, then you get arrested when you get there, or you get arrested as soon as you get back. So just get permission, okay? It sounds like a bit of a nuisance, but it's vital. Do you understand that? I do. Judge says, also, with you being on electronic monitoring, it will be incumbent, because the second you left, it would look like you were a fleeing felon, okay? Or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I believe that was one of, Judge cuts her off. So I don't want you to do that. Don't get anybody upset. Heather says, okay. You're to avoid any contact with anyone who might be a witness or a victim in this case, or your co-defendant, Randall Bean. You're not to have any contact with any of those people. So any of those people out at the facility, wherever that was, I can't remember, they... Anyone, <clears throat> excuse me, anybody that might be a witness or a victim or your co-defendant, okay? Do you understand that? I do. So, she's not allowed to contact Randy Bean, yet uh, she may need to work with Randy to strategize this case. I don't... I don't know 
wow, there seems to be an awful lot of restrictions here that hamper Heather's ability to put her own case together. I think it would be imperative to be able to talk to Randy Bean. So Heather says, I do. All right. You look like you're bothered. <laughs> the judge says, wow. All right. You look like you're bothered. Well, no, I'm just, I have a question. Judge says, yes. If I might. For preparation for the case, because a lot of the testimony has to be gone over and prepared for the case, how am I to do that if I can't have contact with Randall Bean or his attorney? Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I was just saying. Well, you can have contact with his attorney. And if he's pro se, then what do I do? Then we'll have to take that up. But at this point, he's represented by an attorney. Heather says, right. It's just my understanding that he has a hearing today to, de to determine whether to fire that attorney and proceed pro se. So that I wanted to be clear with that. I wanted to be clear that with the court before we go out of this courtroom and then I have to make a motion. Judge says, when you go out of this courtroom, he currently has an attorney and he may still have an attorney come tomorrow. Heather says, okay. Or he may not but I have to deal with what's happening right now at this moment. And right now at this moment, you can't talk to him. Fair enough. I understand that replies Heather. If you both end up pro se, then you can file a motion for contact and we'll have to take that up. Okay. It would be probably Mr. Lloyd could help you would probably be a motion to modify conditions. Okay. So you're not to have a firearm or any destructive device or other weapon, okay? That has nothing to do with your rights to have a gun. It has everything to do with a probation officer walks in where you're living. There's not to be a gun in there, okay? <clears throat> Heather says, I understand. So you're not to excessively use alcohol and you're not to unlawfully possess any narcotic drug or controlled substance. You're not to have any controlled substances unless you have a prescription from a licensed doctor. Do you understand that? I do. So I'm only going to, I'm not going to put you on home incarceration or home detention at this point. I'm just going to give you a curfew, eight o'clock at night until eight in the morning. And then you put on, and then put you on electronic monitoring, okay? If you have problems doing that, I may have to up the detention. But for now, you can get permission to go where you need to go and just be home by 8 o'clock at night and not leave before 8 in the morning, okay? Is that, if that works a hardship with you, you'll let Mr. Lloyd know and he'll tell you how to contact us about changing that, okay? Okay, replies Heather. But given your lifestyle and everything at this point, that sounds like it's pretty fair, okay? You're to submit to location monitoring. They'll set up a phone line with you. You're to report as soon as possible to your pretrial or probation officer if you were to be stopped by any law enforcement officer for any reason. Okay, so if anybody stops you, questions you, anything, you need to contact your probation officer first, okay? On the back page where you're going to sign it, it provides that if you violate any of these conditions, what I've told you before, I will issue a warrant for your arrest and potentially revoke your release. It also advises you that if you were to commit another federal felony while you were out on release, it could be up to an additional 10 years in prison. It also provides that if you were to obstruct a criminal investigation or if you were to retaliate or attempt to retaliate, tamper with or attempt to tamper with, intimidate, attempt to intimidate any witness, any victim or any informant. That's another 10 years in prison, which is why I standardly, you know, put in there, stay away from your co-defendants because you don't want to take a chance that somebody alleges, oh, she was trying to tamper with me or she was trying to intimidate me or something like that. You don't that wouldn't work to your benefit. Heather says, I understand. 
Judd says, I don't have to decide who's telling the truth if you just stay away from them. But invariably, people get together and somebody claims something and the other person says no. With 10 years of prison on the line, you'll have to make the decision about the risk in that. So you understand all those? I'm aware and I understand it all. Thank you, replies Heather. Okay, it says here where you're going to sign. You acknowledge that you are the defendant in this case and you are aware of the conditions of release. This is interesting. Uh, you acknowledge that you are the defendant. This, by her signing this, uh, I believe she is identified as, you know, I think defendant is, is in all caps. Um, let's see, we're at the end of page 68. So we're going to scroll up here to the very first page. Okay, no, they've got it in mixed case here. That's right, I remember going over that. But I seem to remember somewhere in all of this researching about the straw man corporations and how you get duped. Uh, when they say, will the defendant please rise? If you stand up, then you're basically identifying yourself as the defendant. So... What it appears to me is that in order to be released, uh, Heather had to identify as the defendant. And I'm not sure that that's a really good thing. I hope she signs all of that uh, with her standard stuff without prejudice. Okay, well, we're about 26 minutes into this. I think that's a good place to call it quits for now. Uh, we're going to start up on page 69 when we come back. All right. Well, we've got a wonderful helper right over here. She's still in her place. Yeah, she sleeps so that I can stay up late and read transcripts to you. If you got any email for me, any love, light, or links, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. We'll be back really soon with part six of the detention hearing transcript. Peace out. Bye-bye.